Hi, I'm Jerry, and this is a thousand words or so quick guide to a subject suggested by my son. He wanted to know about the first tank battle, or more precisely, the first time tanks were in combat against other tanks. This occurred during the second battle of villers bretonneux which took place from the 24th to the 27th of April 1918. During the tank action of the 24th, initially three A7V German Sturmpanzerwagen escorting ground troops happened across three Mark IV British tanks. Seven medium whippet tanks, not present during the initial encounter, engaged the infantry, and late in the action a fourth A7V got involved. Whether or not it was one of the original trio is unknown to me, but as 13 were successfully deployed in the overall battle, either seems possible. Now I don't propose to do a detailed account of the tanks involved, so here's a quick summary. The A7V is, I think, a misunderstood vehicle, because while they're called tanks, in reality they were closer to armoured personnel carriers and cargo transports. Only 20 of the former were manufactured, and none of the latter, and for all their limited numbers they were surprisingly successful. Though set against the larger scale of the war, their contributions were minimal. Its development began as a response to the appearance of the first British tanks in September 1916. Under the auspices of the Allgemeine Kriegsdepartment Abteilung 7 Verkehrswesen, General War Department Section 7 Transportation, Josef Vollmer designed the A7V to the requirements that it weigh 30 tons, be capable of 12 kilometers per hour, cross a 1.5 meter ditch, be armed with two cannon, one front and one rear, and machine guns. A universal chassis became part of the design when the German army wished to include a role for the vehicle as a battlefield cargo carrier. The final production version matched the requirements quite closely, though in reality it was slightly faster than specified. Final armament was a single 57mm Maxim Nordenfeld cannon and six 7.92mm MG08 machine guns. Although quite fast by the standards of the time, it wasn't really suited for off-road travel and its tall, boxy design gave it a high centre of gravity that resulted in a tendency to get stuck or roll over on steep slopes. It seems to have been a well-manufactured and moderately reliable vehicle. One of its opponents at villers bretonneux was the British Mark IV tank. These were present in two versions. The so-called female version was armed with machine guns, five in total. The male was equipped with two six-pounder cannon in sponsons on the sides and three machine guns. All the machine guns were Lewis light machine guns and the cannon were shortened versions of the Hotchkiss quick-firing naval gun. The Mark IV was, as the name suggests, the result of improvements to the Mark I that had first appeared on the battlefield in 1916 and prompted the German development of the A7V. These included better armour and shortened cannon, as the originals had a tendency to get hung up on terrain. In a nod to crew safety, fuel was now carried in a single external tank between the rear track horns. It was much slower than the A7V, with a top speed of only 4 km per hour. Engaging primarily the German infantry were seven Whippet medium tanks. These were designed by Sir William Tritton to be used in fast mobile assaults. As such, they weighed in at only 14 tons, and with two double-decker bus engines, one per track, they could achieve a speed of just over 13 miles per hour, which was significantly faster than any other tanks of the time. Their armament was light, consisting of four Hotchkiss heavy machine guns, which given that there was only one gunner means he had a lot of moving around to do, sometimes with the assistance of the tank commander and sometimes with a second gunner squeezed in. Space was sufficiently cramped that on occasion one of the guns would be removed as it was possible to move a gun from mount to mount. Despite seeing limited use at the end of World War I, they were surprisingly effective in their intended role. Details of the engagement vary, so I have, to the best of my ability, put together a composite account with significant reference to the British tank commander's own version of history. On April 24, 1918, three Mark IV tanks, two females and a male commanded by Lieutenant Frank Mitchell were dispatched to hold the position at Cachy against a German advance. 
they were still in transit when they encountered the A7V known as Nixie, commanded by Lieutenant Wilhelm Biltz. Two others, Siegfried and Schnuck, were in sight, but somewhat further to the rear and not immediately involved. With an initial engagement range of three to five hundred meters, Lieutenant Biltz opened fire on Mitchell's tank, then when it dipped out of sight switched fire to the two female tanks, blowing holes in them with his 57 millimeter cannon and forcing them to retreat. Their machine guns were unable to penetrate the armor on the A7V. On the other hand, armor-piercing bullets from the Germans were able to penetrate the remaining Mark IV, causing one casualty, a Lewis gunner with a blue bullet through both legs. Lieutenant Mitchell's crew had been reduced from seven to four by an earlier gas attack, and despite this performed remarkably well, firing on the move against Nixie in order to avoid artillery fire and rounds from the German tank cannon. After three rounds were expended from his left side six-pounder to no effect, Mitchell risked coming to a halt long enough for his cannoneer, still suffering from the effects of gas and blind in his right eye, to put three shells into the A7V. The 57mm cannon was disabled and an oil pump damage causing Nixie to stop. Disabled and fearing fire from further hits, the surviving crew bailed out. Several were killed by Mitchell's remaining machine gun as they ran for cover. Lieutenant Biltz survived. Siegfried and Schnuck had been advancing accompanied by infantry, and Mitchell initially fired case shot rounds at the soldiers before switching to the enemy tanks, firing ranging shots. Somewhat to his surprise and considerable relief, they moved off. Being now the only tank remaining on the battlefield, Mitchell's Mark IV was targeted by German artillery and forced to withdraw. Desperate maneuvers to avoid incoming fire, including a bombing run, resulted in the tank temporarily getting stuck in a shell crater, but the crew were able to extricate themselves. Seven medium whippet tanks moved in and engaged the German infantry with their machine guns and by physically running over them. In this they were extremely effective and killed over 400. The two A7Vs, incorrectly assumed by Mitchell to be retreating, engaged the smaller tanks. Siegfried destroyed two with cannon fire and disabled a third with machine guns. As the surviving four retreated, Schnuck, which had been delayed by mechanical trouble, killed another. The surviving three withdrew, by Mitchell's report with blood dripping from their tracks. At this point a fourth A7V arrived. It is not clear if this was Siegfried or Schnuck or another German tank, and Mitchell's gunner opened fire on it at a range of about a thousand yards. Return fire, or possibly artillery, hit and disabled a track, so the crew abandoned their vehicle and took cover in a British-held trench, telling the astonished Tommies to take your bayonets out of the way. Lieutenant Biltz and his crew attempted to recover their vehicle and return to base, but were thwarted when the engines broke down. Further attempts by the Germans to recover Nixie were unsuccessful, so it was destroyed in place by a demolition crew. The overall battle was won by the Allies, but focusing on just the tank action, of the three or four German tanks involved, only one was lost. The ten British tanks lost seven of their number. Under the circumstances, it was clear that female Mark IVs and Whippets were outclassed against A7Vs. The latter were impervious to machine gun fire, and according to Lieutenant Mitchell, even the Mark IV was not. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more of the same, please like and subscribe.